Hey guys, Halfway Dead here with another episode of Rocket Science. In this one, we are going to explain input consistency, run experiments, discuss how to optimize it, and show how the experiments could be used to test heavy car bug. Let's get this topic started. Why would you or anyone care about the topic of input consistency? Let me illustrate this with a simple example. My car is positioned a short distance away from the ball, standing still. I want to get a powerful shot, so I will accelerate with boost, jump, tilt back and dodge forward. There is an optimal timing of all the steps in this routine, which will maximize the power of the shot. Finding the correct approach shall be a topic of a future video. However, what I want to discuss here are the things that can get in the way of executing this shot perfectly, even if you know how to do it. The most obvious, and one would hope, the biggest influencer of the execution is the human. Even when knowing how to hit a powerful shot, any human can easily mess up the correct timings by a couple hundredths of a second. But it isn't the only culprit in this equation. The input device can also make a difference. I have already mentioned this in my controller input lag test and I'll further elaborate on the testing scenarios later. But a device with only 100Hz polling can cause a deviation of up to 10 milliseconds. And regarding wireless controllers, I've previously measured up to 20 millisecond deviations due to wireless interference or weak signal strength. And lastly, we also have the game. Now to set the record straight, Rocket League physics are deterministic. That means if the same inputs get used in the same physics step, the outcome will be identical every time you repeat the same inputs. There are still reasons for why their timing could get messed up though, even if the human and the input device have done their job perfectly. The game only checks the state of the inputs every frame, but the physics run at an independent rate which can create alignment inconsistencies. I'll explain that later, let's get back to the human aspect. As always, I didn't want to just state the obvious, that humans aren't perfect. I wanted data. I wasn't able to find quite what I wanted online, so I set up my own experiment. I opened up and wired up my mouse to connect it to my Arduino. A necessary step to make sure the machine error of the measurement is basically zero. What I did then was to turn a metronome to 120 BPM and tapped along with the beat, measuring the times between each button press. The expected time is 500 milliseconds and that was pretty much exactly my average. The interesting part however is obviously the consistency. In this case the standard deviation. It was just below 50 milliseconds in my case. A short note here. While I have played the piano since I was 5 and would expect myself to be above average at this kind of exercise, I didn't feel like I was able to replicate the same consistency that I can when playing a piece of music. Therefore I think that this is not the human limit of timing accuracy. But it is a data point to start with and I was also interested in confirming whether the average timing fits a normal distribution. And it does. But how does the polling rate tie into this? To figure that out, I can take the measurements and treat them as if they were made at a lower polling rate. The results seem rather uninteresting at first sight. Even with a polling rate of 100Hz, which is the lowest of any common controller that I'm aware of, the inconsistency only increases by 0.3 milliseconds, or 1.8% compared to 1000Hz. That is a good sign. And makes sense if you consider that some professionals are using the DS3 at the highest level of play. But I also said that 100Hz polling could screw you over by almost 10 milliseconds. And that is still true. Let's say you press the button 501 milliseconds after the previous press. And you barely miss the polling window of the controller. As a result, your input will be sent after 510 milliseconds. Making it 9 milliseconds worse than it was. But, and that's a big but, the exact same thing can also make your input 9 milliseconds better if you press the button too early after 491 milliseconds. In the end, this effect will save you as much as it will screw you over. But the average inconsistency only goes up slightly because the options are more extreme. 
It should be noted that if you go as low as 50 Hz or even lower, the inconsistencies will start to get significant quite quickly. In the same sense, someone with better timing accuracy than me might be limited by 100 Hz polling already. Earlier I said that there are other technical reasons for why inputs might be inconsistent. Those are best shown by going over the entire input process from the button press to physics. In this example, we are going to assume that we wanted and managed to press down a button for exactly 50 milliseconds. Our controller shall have a polling rate of 250 Hz, so it polls every 4 milliseconds. 50 divided by 4 equals 12.5. It doesn't divide. We can only have a 48 millisecond or a 52 millisecond button press. Which scenario happens is decided by the timing of the button press within the 4 millisecond window. We can assume those micro timing alignments to be random. In this case a 50-50 chance for either scenario. Then we have the game running at a stable 144 FPS. The game checks the inputs every frame so it's going to check every 6.94 milliseconds. 48 divided by 6.94 equals 6.91, which gives 91% chance for the input to last 7 frames and a 9% chance to last 6 frames. In the 52 millisecond input case, it could last either 7 or 8 frames. The physics in Rocket League, however, get calculated independently of the frame rate with 120 ticks a second. Apply the same kind of math we did in the last step and you get the end result. There are three scenarios. Either the game calculates the physics as if you press the button for 5 ticks, approximately 42 milliseconds, 6 ticks, exactly 50 milliseconds, or 7 ticks, 58 milliseconds. The odds of registering the intended 50 milliseconds are only 67% and the other two scenarios are 16% each. Had we kept the frame rate at 120 FPS instead, having it at exactly the same rate as the physics, we would have a 76% chance for exactly 50 milliseconds. Any multiple of the physics tick rate will outperform any other frame rate in terms of consistency. This may sound more dramatic than it is until you calculate that with my inconsistency data earlier, I would only be able to hit the perfect tick 22% of the time. The example was also assuming a perfectly stable frame rate, which is unlikely. So far we have seen why achieving 100% consistent inputs is basically impossible. But can we actually measure these effects in a test and see how it affects gameplay? A theory means nothing unless it holds up in an experiment. This is the part which took me the longest to make. You might think it's easy. Just create a macro of any gaming software and run it over and over again. Sadly, it's not. The accuracy of these ranges from completely inconsistent to usable in some tests. Unfortunately, when the whole purpose of the experiment is to measure consistency, then slight inconsistencies are already unacceptable. So I went back to my trusted Arduino. It has a microcontroller that allows me to connect it to the PC just like any real gamepad. The only difference is that I am free to program it exactly how I want. So I got to work and wrote some code that allows me to not only run macros on the Arduino, but also simulate polling rates and other inaccuracies. Then I set up the shot from the initial example I gave at the beginning of the video. To ensure maximum baseline consistency, I took a couple of steps. Rocket Labs map, lowest graphics settings, Close down every program I didn't need and maximum performance mode in Windows so the processor doesn't use its power saving features. I also locked the frame rate to 240, a multiple of the physics tick rate that I was able to reach in a very stable manner. Then I let the experiment run for as much time as was feasible. For the baseline experiment that was 6000 shots which takes over 4 hours. The results are better than I expected to be quite honest. The default shot I set up was 3041.75 Unreal units per second and it happened 91% of the time. Within the entire test not a single shot was below 3008 Unreal units per second 
and not a single one above 3062 unreal units per second. That's a difference of less than 2 km an hour or barely over 1 mile an hour. Still, rather uninteresting on its own, so let's go on to the comparisons. First, I varied the polling rate. Default 1000Hz, 250Hz, 125Hz and 100Hz. Default 1200 hertz. The percentage of perfectly consistent macros is 91%, 67%, 47% and 26% respectively. In the macro there are obviously multiple actions that have to be done at exactly the correct timing relative to each other. So those 26% are most definitely better than the 22% human quota I said earlier. The worst case shot strength for all polling rates below 1000 Hz was also an additional kilometer an hour lower. In my controller input lag test, I measured that despite a lower average input lag of the DS4 in wireless mode, the input consistency was a little worse. Other wireless controllers tended to have slightly lower consistency too. With the latency distribution data I collected back then, I can now simulate what using a wireless DS4 would be like with my Arduino. The result is kinda interesting, but it makes sense. The amount of times the perfect frame timing is hit is 78%, as opposed to the 67% in the 250Hz wired case. However, that is not the full story which I think can be best shown in visual. Most of the time, the higher polling rate saves the controller and makes it more consistent, but wireless is never 100% stable and you can get these spikes which have bigger impacts on actual gameplay than the polling rate will ever have. I'd personally rather have small inconsistencies often than bigger inconsistencies rarely but you can make an argument to justify either cable or wireless. What else can we test? Well, obviously frame rate. I've made a big deal out of matching the frame rate with physics, so I have to back that claim up. I tested a couple of frame rates, but for the main comparison I went with 144, since it's bigger than 120 and one that people commonly use. To make sure this doesn't just come down to a bit of randomness, the experiment was also run for over 4000 shots. The amount of perfectly consistent shots went down to 68% instead of 91%. But I hear you say, isn't that just the lower frame rate in general? It is not. With 120 FPS, the result was the same again as 240. In fact, a tiny bit better, but that is likely just down to randomness, because I didn't test it as long. I also tried unlocking the frame rate completely, causing the frame rates to go up to around 600 to 800. As frame rates approach infinity, the theory predicts that the syncing starts to get irrelevant, but I was still able to measure a 5% drop in consistency here. More concerning are the results that happen below 120 FPS. At 60 FPS, the intended shot happened exactly zero times. Since the game only checks the inputs every frame, all actions will last an even amount of physics takes. That means the intended macro cannot be executed perfectly. In a sense, the 60 FPS case was still consistent, because there were basically only two different results that happened a combined 95% of the time. Those two results have a speed difference of 4 km an hour though, which makes that gap bigger than any of the worst results that happened at higher frame rates. Because of that you will always want as high of a frame rate as you can get, if you can't get at least 120. These results are interesting, but in real situations you're probably not going to get that stable of a frame rate. The reason I did most of the tests this way is that introducing inconsistencies will also make the experiment results more random. Regardless, I did want to check whether any of this is relevant when the frame rate isn't as stable. So I did test exactly that. By putting a Twitch livestream and a YouTube video on my second monitor, left all my usual apps like Spotify and Discord open and put the graphics settings to the maximum. The frame graph looked like this. So very inconsistent, but it does still hit the capped frame rate quite a bit. Obviously, if you never reach the capped frame rate, then the cap is completely irrelevant. 
So I did this with 240 and 144 FPS. And the results are quite clear. The perfect shot with 240 unstable FPS happens slightly more often than with stable 144 FPS. Unstable 144 FPS was 30% worse. Stable 144 FPS is of course still better than unstable 240 FPS because getting a big stutter will really screw you over. That wasn't the point of this experiment though. So all I had left to do is try it myself. I got the intended shot, you guessed it, zero times in 500 tries. Obviously I can't imitate a macro, but we can once again look at the visuals to see something interesting. First let's go with the best case scenario I had. This shows that if Rocket League is running as well as it can, you should never blame the game for missing. The 144 FPS unstable experiment had some major stutters from time to time. And those can be just as bad as your own whiffs. Personally, I thought the 60 FPS stable experiment was the most interesting though. If you line up my good shots with those results, you'll see that if you just take my good shots, they vary no more, if not less. That would explain why no one who has played 120 plus FPS likes going back down. There are just these shots where you felt like you did well, but it doesn't go exactly as expected. But I'm probably starting to interpret a bit too much here to call it science. Feel free to draw your own conclusions. Too long, didn't watch. What can you do to get the maximum consistency? First, get the best PC you can, so you have enough horsepower to run the game at a stable high frame rate. Second, get an input device with the highest possible polling rate that is wired, if feasible. Third, cap your frame rate at 120 or 240 FPS. The latter will have a little lower input lag, but it's basically irrelevant for consistency. Fourth, optimize graphics settings and power options to tweak performance. Is your frame rate stable? Congratulations, you have done all you could and now you don't have any excuses left when you miss the ball. Whoops. This leaves another question open though. Is there anything Psionics could do? Since the physics aren't tied to frame rate, there are indeed options. I got Buckus to write me a piece of code that would read the inputs directly to the physics ticks, skipping visual frames. My also smart idea turned out to be really stupid when I found out that the physics tags are actually cute relative to the visual frames and therefore calculated at irregular intervals, even though they act as if they are calculated at regular intervals. Ergo, the results are identical. There's still a possibility to get more consistency through an input buffer. I'm not gonna explain in detail what it is, but it would increase input lag in order to improve consistency. I might try that out in a future video, if people are interested, and ask players to test it in free play to see if they like it. Psionics tends not to experiment too much and give us too many options, so I don't have the highest hopes of ever seeing it in the game. If you're only here because of Heavy Kabak and you still watched all the way, then I applaud you for trying to understand everything I talked about so far. I shall make a short explanation of what I understand as Heavy Kabak and how this video relates to it. Quite a long time ago, some players started to complain about Rocket League on Reddit and the official forums, stating that the control of their car felt inconsistent, shots felt weak and or their cars were outright turning or moving slower. Moreover, a distinction that I like to make, although I think some people are split on this, is that the bug only happens sometimes or it only happens on a specific account. If you don't have anything to compare to, after all, there is no way for you to know if the inconsistencies you are feeling are out of the ordinary or even your own fault. So with that out of the way, here is the problem. No one has been able to reliably reproduce this change in game behavior and it's supposedly independent of such proven inconsistency factors as unstable frame rates. There have been a large number of suggestions on possible causes of the symptoms as well as fixes in the past, but for some it never seems to go away. First I want to get into some of the causes. 
Very often I have heard that the physics actually change when heavy Kabak happens. That is essentially impossible in online games. The server and your computer calculate the physics independently. And if your car's turning radius on your computer was wrong, then the server would send a different location and you get moved to the correct location. I could also talk about how I test the physics every patch to make sure they stay the same. But that is obviously only proof that it is that way for me. But there's a heavy Kabak Discord where many affected people have been doing a lot of tests with the help of some Psyonix developers and as far as I've understood it, they have ruled out actual physics changes. Another suggestion is input lag. Delayed inputs can feel horrible and I myself would never like running on a TV with high input lag. The problem with this suggestion is that you can obviously have high input lag but that it isn't necessarily Rocket League's fault. I have already made lots of videos explaining and measuring different causes of input lag. Once again, the people in the testing discord have already been trying to measure the input lag Rocket League causes through code. If you're still suspicious, my external testing setup could be reproduced with about 40 to 50 dollars, which would allow testing your input lag and confirming that it stays constant. So if it's neither the physics nor the input lag, then it must be that inputs are not reaching the correct physics ticks. For which I would suggest using a setup such as the one I had in this video. If the macros can get consistent inputs but you can't, it must be your fault. If the data shows anything suspicious, then you have something to work with that might help fix the issue. So my suggestion is that you can contact me and I will help you order and set up these tests on your own computer if you want to. I do hope that if there are a lot of people, I can refer you to those that have already done it so you can help each other. Before you go and contact me, I want you to seriously consider that because it will be some work and the setup isn't completely free. I personally do think it's either a visual bug or a placebo. I'm not just gonna state that though. I'm going to give you two completely free experiments to do right now that might convince you. First one is just an anecdote to counter some of the heavy Kabak related statements I have heard. In the workshop map called The Wall, there is a tight turn at the very beginning of level 4. It is possible to get through that turn without power slide while boosting from the start. Though if you try for the first time, you will likely fail. The only way to do it is to pre-steer before you can even see where you're going. Why am I showing you this? I think I've heard the statement, see how quick Squishy's car moves? My car's always slower, one too many times. The top players are able to make turns and twists just in time because they have already given the input way before you think about it. When a player lands perfectly on the wall after they've flipped into the ball, it is because they have done the right inputs before their flip was even over. Enough about that. The more interesting experiment is the second one. It's pretty simple, just go into an exhibition match with the slow-mo mutator and play that for 30 minutes straight. Alternatively, you can use Bacchus mode to create slow-mo and free play. When you go back to normal speed after playing slow-mo for that long, it's gonna feel way too fast. It's a great example of a placebo fooling your brain into thinking something is too fast or too slow even though it's not. And you're not immune to this because you have x thousand hours. I hope no one who thinks the bug is real takes this personally. I don't have proof that it isn't, but I could never prove that unless I tested all the computers all the time. Please do not take this as an insult. It doesn't matter who you are, our minds can be fooled. Science has never accepted a feeling as proof and I will not believe that this is a real bug until I have seen evidence that shows it. Before I inevitably cause too many dislikes, I shall end it. Shout out to my patrons who continue to support me financially. Without them, videos like this one would be impossible. If you want to join the supporters for as little as $1, you get a vote on topic priority and a guaranteed reply to your questions. If you want to stay up to date about Rocket League changes and the channel, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord and I'll see you soon for the next video.